so many followers on Instagram, a lot of young women look up to you. Like, you can't be sitting on Instagram cursing and acting crazy all day. Like, if people like you and they love you and, and you a leader, then show them the way. Show them the right way. I mean, what, what kind of gentleman would we be if we didn't open okay, the door? Okay, I know that's What's right. What's going on, love? How are you? <laughs> Welcome. How you doing, Rashad? Hey, Rashad. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, yeah, this is, a, this is an important conversation, you know. I, I've heard that you want to be remembered as the businesswoman that you are. And I do. So this is the perfect place. And I'm glad to be here. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Ari is done. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I learned so much about you. Um, I learned uh, Chicago. They say. Uh, what up, Joe? They say what up, Joe. <laughs> they say uh, gym shoes. I got my gym, gym shoes. shoes on today for and sure. You're gonna take us to where it get real soulful. <laughs> yes. That's all part of it. Okay. A tour package. We got exactly. the we got the, the scenery for it. We wanted, you, we wanted you to feel at home. I feel so at home now. This <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>, y'all. <laughs> So I want to get into this because, you know, a lot of times people have a perception of people that, you know, they see in the news, people they see on social media, but the perception is not reality. They don't understand, like, the business, the hard work that goes into it. They just think that somebody just pops up one day and they're just an influencer. Right. What does that term even mean? So a lot of things that we want to talk about. But first, I want to hear, what's your view on social media? Like, how were you able to use it to build your brand? And um, how do you feel about the term influencer? I think that I've been like an influencer since I was like a little girl. I always, even like in high school, I was like the popular girl in school. Probably didn't have all the money in the world, you know, but like I was still popular. Everybody knew me. Then even like in the city, like everybody knew me in the city. I used to work in the clubs, like doing bottle service. So like I always kind of been like popular and then when I was doing, I was on social media while I was still like working and stuff, but I could see how like I was gravitating a lot of people towards me just from like my posts that I was like posting a regular picture and people were like, oh I like that or where you get that or da da and then it's like they like my style. Like, you know, and I ain't doing nothing but being myself. <laughs> so it's like I got some type of influence, you know, it ain't just like a pretty face. It's like something about me and I and it's my personality too. So I think that people really like be like, I f her cause she just she I'm relatable. So I think that like to have influence, because there's a lot of people on Instagram who have millions of followers, mm -hmm. but they don't have influence. Like you have to really like be a certain, not a certain kind of way, you be yourself, but like it's only a certain amount of people that really, really got influence. And I'm one of those people. So, so when did it start to take off for you on social media? Like when you really like, all right, this is, this is a wave. I'm, I'm creating a, a name for myself. I, I would say 2000. 17 maybe 2016 2017 it sounds about right i mean the first time i heard the name it was 2017 it was a young lady uh that was working with us at the time she just kept reposting your pictures i'm like why do you keep reposting to somebody else like she's like no i love her this is how we're gonna make her big i'm like what i really didn't understand it and so like you said like, you had influence and so at what point did you figure out that i could turn this influence into a monetary situation. Because that's something that people can't do, right? Like there's a lot of people with millions of followers and they don't, they can't figure out how to make a business out of it, but you figured it out. Right. So at what point was that? Is this 2017 as well? So uh, for me, I'm gonna say it's 2018, right? So I was noticing like how these people, like they like me, they following me, they comment, like they liking stuff. So I'm like, we like, let's, let's, um, book me somewhere like you know like have promoters that could come and they could book me so when people start booking me it was like damn like they f with me for real you know like so i'm like okay cool so now it's like it's is really going like i'm getting booking after book and then when i'm going to these places it was at first it weirded me out a little bit because i'm like you know it's people screaming my name and i'm sitting here looking like <laughs> damn like it's for real you know like they really really like me they really love me so it's like not just the love from the internet like when i would get booked at these places i was feeling the love like damn i could do something with this you know like i could shake me a little tail feather i could fold, you know like 
So I think that when I start doing hostings and going to cities and seeing these people and like the energy that they gave me was like, I could do anything. Was it Chicago first? Right, obviously you're from there. And so like, was it one of those situations? People always ask us, how do we scale? And we always say, get how you are first. And then the rest of the world will catch on. Was it, was it Chicago that was like, booking you and saying like, we, this, this is the girl, this is the girl, and then the rest of the world called, or it was outside forces? No, nope, it was outside, but the city with me, but it was, I was like getting booked outside. You know, people, they were like, we know you, we love you, but like we be seeing you, you know, like you in the city. So it was like outside, it was like different cities. What was like the first price that you charged for? 3500 uh, 3500 All in. All in. <laughs> No so, back end. Like, Needed the money up front. No, nah, back in. Okay. <laughs> back in. Back in. All right. So how'd that feel? Like, like you said, I mean, you know, just to just to get paid to actually just be somewhere. Because some people get thirty five hundred for a month, like of work. Like they have to yeah. work a job and get three thousand dollars for the whole entire month. So you just showing up for an hour and a half, two hours, and then they got five like, minutes. 45 minutes, excuse me, <laughs> bottles. Like, how'd that, how'd, additional. That, how'd that feel? Like, what was the first feeling when you was like, this is a vibe? Uh, it felt good. At first it was a little weird, cause it was like, I don't know, I didn't really know how to accept like all the attention, I, you know, cause I'm like, I don't like people like touching me, you know, like I'm, people get too close, I get a little like, mm-mm, you know, like back up. But then it started to like become like natural. Like these people really f you, they like you, they love you, you know, but I'm like, from Chicago, so he'd be like, mm, you touching me. Like, you know? <laughs> but um, it was it's, it was a great feeling. I'm so happy and I'm so thankful that we started doing them thirty five hundred dollar bookings. <laughs> Life changing. Life changing. <laughs> so I mean, that's a lot. So you're getting these bookings, but are you managing it yourself? Are you the person that's the booking agent and your no, so my it was my manager. Oh, you got a man? Got a manager out the gate. Out the gate? Yeah. So right. Okay. So let's take it back a little let's bit. Let's do it. Okay. So when I was seventeen, I was still in school. I was still in high school, and I was working at the door. My cousin, this, my cousin is my manager. She do not play, y'all, okay? She is about her bag. So she like, you not, and I used to go to her house. We used to live together. So it was like, you not finna keep coming over here stealing my little t-shirts and stuff. You know, like, you finna work. So she put me to work. So I was working at this club called Adriana's in Chicago. I was just a door girl, like, taking people numbers. Like, when you know you come to the club, you're like, you want to come at free before 11, I'll take your number down? That was me. I was the door girl. So... And then she like, okay, you can start working inside the club. Like just, I was doing like um, the the free bar, like before 12 or something. And I was like pouring the shots. Okay. And I started doing- Bottle service. The bottle service. And then we like, okay, let's do something else. And then we had a hair business, Kaiche Extensions. We did it for a while, but I think that the money that we was making like in the club, it was like more than that on top of Dealing with all, she dealt with way more than me when it came to like the people. She like all the emails, backlash, like it's 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 me, but like she the one who got to deal with these people, mm. sending hair back, try to get a new vendor, going back and forth. You know, like it was just a lot. It was too much, and then we just kind of was just like, Fuck it. done with the hair business. Done with the hair business. <laughs> it was it was cool though. We made some money now. Don't get me wrong. Like we made some money. It was cool. It was a, we had a great run, but it was just it was a lot to handle. We really didn't know all the ins and outs of like a business and like how to really control it and do it. So at that time, you already had developed that relationship. A, your family, so you knew each other your whole life. Right. But you had a business relationship from the club and then the hair. Right. So when you start doing promotion, it was already there because y'all already had that relationship. Right. So some people say not to work with family. How has your experience, what's your take on that? Cause you work with family. So what's your take on that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we have, uh, we, we've been through it. We, we have been through it, but it's never been like nothing. Well, no, yeah, we've been through it, <laughs> through a, 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 a lot of shit, but like, I would never change it. Like I would, Literally, I would not do this with nobody else. Like, this is somebody who I know I could trust 100%. 99. <laughs> they, they say you ain't never supposed to trust nobody 100% now. 
I could trust her. Like, I know she got my best interests at heart. And I know that at the end of the day, she not going to bag about our relationship. Like, at the end of the day, if, if say, I be like, I block you, I don't want to talk to you. Okay, but about this chicken, like, <laughs> like you know, she's still going to get to the money. And that's bottom line for us. And we both know that. Like, we know what it's like to, you know what I'm saying, not really have nothing. So, like, you can have your attitude. But you got to do this, this on the calendar, you got to do this, you got to do this. Like, we, we going to communicate about that money. So we ain't never had no problems in the money area. Let me say that. <laughs> very but important. That's important. It has been. We have had a very, very rocky, you know, time. But we, you know, we overcome that shit. Yeah. What, what's know? that feeling like, though? Like, you're the person in the family who has, you know, accumulated a certain level of wealth. Mm -hmm. And everybody doesn't. And so what, is, what, what do you feel like? Do you feel responsibility to I help? Do. I feel I feel pressure, but I'm also grateful. You know, like I want to do it, so it's like it's not as mm, it's hard, but it's not like I don't feel like oh I'm just obligated to do all of this shit. Like I want to do it too because mm -hmm. my family they 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 who got me. You know. So how is that like? How do y'all get through those hard times? Is it sitting down, having a conversation, and then compromise? Because that's important in business. You see a lot of people, you know, break up relationships because they don't know how to communicate. So, like, how is that, you know, getting through those hard times? What's the key to, to that communication and making sure that, you know, it stays on track? I ain't found the key yet. <laughs> we still, we still, <laughs> still figuring it out. Working, you know, progress. <laughs> listen, we still figuring it out. We still got family issues, but... Um, you know, we stand on top of our business because that's what we need to do. But we got a healthy relationship. I, I, I'm going to be completely, I do not have the key. Like, you know, stand strong on your business. Love your people. Don't do no backstabbing. Don't do no flaw shit. Key. And, and that's what we do. Flaw oh, that's the key. That's flaw. That's, that's okay, that's, the, that's the key. We adding that. Flaw shit. Don't do no flaw shit. Don't do no flaw shit. Everybody live by that. The world will be a much better place. <laughs> it's like the Ten, ten Commandments. Um, so let's talk about the launch of your beauty brand. Um, yes, let's talk about it. I'm yeah, so excited. So what's the deal with that? What, what was the inspiration behind that? What are, we, what are we expecting to, you know, see in the next couple of months, coming years from that? So right now I'm doing Remedy. That's the that's the name of my brand, y'all. I'm so excited. I can tell by your whole days. posture. Yeah, everything so, has changed. Because I'm so excited. I've been working on this. We have been working on this for so 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 long, and I put so much work into this, and I'm so excited just to share it. I should have brought y'all some. Yes, it's true. But um, um, I always like I'm a beauty girl, so I like a lot of different makeup and like eyeshadows, lip gloss. Like in my purse, I don't have my purse right here. I got like 50 lip glosses. Maybe like 17 to be exact, for real, like not even being funny. Like I always carry so many different lip glosses. And I just know exactly like how I like my makeup to be. I've been wearing makeup for a long time because I was working in the club. Mm -hmm. Then now I'm on Instagram. Now I'm going to the club. You know, everything, interviews, photo shoots. So I'm like every day, like I know exactly how I like my makeup to be. And I just feel like I know exactly what every woman needs to feel beautiful. Like, I just be like, oh, she could just put a little right here. If she had this shade, like, I just want to do it. Like, mm -hmm. I love makeup <laughs> so much. I'm so happy that I tapped into doing this cosmetic line because this is, like, the perfect thing for me. So how'd you, how'd you develop? Because the cosmetic, that's something that's big, right? Like, makeup and yeah. eyeshadow and lipstick and all that. So... What's the process? Like, you, you, you sitting down with, like, designers that's helping you design this and then, like, the warehouses. Like, how is that, like, from the idea to actually implementing it? We got, like, creative directors to help us. We got a big, we have, I have a big team of people, like, all our photography people, um, the videographers, my manager, um, the directors of whatever set we doing, like, uh, our media person, but we just go through different vendors. We've been going through different vendors for a long time to get like exactly what I like because I'm very, very picky. So we've been like trying and testing out new products mm -hmm. and like it was just, every, whatever sticks, it's like, this is it, this is the perfect one. Like, this is what I want to do. And I'm trying it out on my friends, sending it out to my cousins, just letting everybody try it to see like, is this the perfect product? And everybody loved it. Has that been on the vision board? So obviously you had the influence, right, from social media. Mm -hmm. You had a business with, with the hair extensions that, you know, just didn't work out. 
when you're going through that, are you on the vision board drawing like cosmetic line, beauty care, because you know the power of your influence? Was, was, did that, like, was that the goal like in the early years? Like in early, like let's say 2017, 2018? No. So it, Everything happened so fast. Like I always wanted to do something first. I thought I wanted to do clothes, mm. but I'm not even creative enough for real to be designing a bunch of different clothes. Like, so I wanted to do something that I really, really, really like, and it's makeup. That is what I really love. I really love makeup. Yeah, that, there's power in that, right? Like you saying like, hey, that's not my strength. Yeah. Right, rather than trying to force it and yeah. saying like, out there, there's a bag there, it could end up in a bad situation because yeah, no. you're not passionate about it. Because that's why I feel like people do stuff and then they be like, I don't want to do this no more. You want to do something else? Like, this is this is sticking for me. This is it for me. Y'all gonna see. Watch this. I'm gonna show y'all. No, I mean we saw two young ladies become billionaires, Rihanna and Kylie Jenner, mm -hmm. both off of cosmetics. I'm coming number three. <laughs> I'm gonna see y'all soon, boo. Period. Pool. <laughs> You heard them. I heard them. <laughs> <laughs> were, were, were they inspiration for you at all? Watch Absolutely. Watching what they was doing? Yes, hell yeah. I love them. They are so, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love them. They set the tone. They they do it big. I love their makeup. I love their lines. I love their creative. They teams. They got a lot of support. Definitely, for sure. So it sounds like you're pretty hands-on. And so I'm digging back. And so are you involved in the price points? For the products as well, because if you're pro you, you take me as a person that you know you want to know the profit margins on on the items that you're gonna be selling. Hell yeah, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Is it like for the marketing? We see like a lot of brand ambassadors, especially like I'm thinking of Rihanna, like with the Fenty. Is that something that you want to do? Like have other you know social media influencers, artists, like as brand ambassadors, or are you just like just putting it out there, letting the the people champion it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna send out some PR packages. I haven't really thought about if I want to do like paid promotions, like to use like other like influencers. Um, I think I'm pretty strong, but I do think that, you know, it'd be good to have a consistent influencer, you know, use it. But I want people to really use it and like it, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, if I send it to you and you be like, no, I really, really like this, like, you know, we could we could work some things out, <laughs> you know. But I don't want to just put it out there and like, oh, let me pay you. Yeah. You know, like I want people to actually really Genuinely like it. Rock yeah. With Cause it. that's how I am when I when I promote stuff. Like if I don't like it, I'm not gonna promote it. I'll be like, you know, and people be coming with they you know their checks, but I'm like, it's too it's too it's millions of people. I can't steer all them people wrong. It just don't sit right. It don't feel right. Yeah. I was going to say, good, good work sells itself. Well, that, That's a fact. Yeah. Good dope good, sells well, itself. Well, I, we try to clean it up <laughs> for the, the network. But yeah, good dope sells itself. But what you speak to is, is the power of partnership, right? Whether people are, you're paying for them to, to build a brand or people are trying to pay, pay you to build their brand. Right. And so what's that process like for you, right? You're turning down a lot of things, but you are selecting some things, right? So I know fashion wasn't one of your things, right. but you have worked with Fashion Nova. And so like, what, what's the process like when you're selecting a person or a company that you're going to say, all right, this is worth it for me. I, I align with them. Let's make this happen. Um, the only thing that I've ever really turned down is like um, like stuff for people's private parts or like like sex toys and uh, like. Yoni Steam. We got to Google that. Yoni Steam. <laughs> nah, it's, nah. It, it, it's like. It's these like washes that like okay. the girls use and stuff for their hair. Like I don't like stuff like that. I wouldn't promote like waxing, okay. stuff that like could put people. Yeah. But anything else like, it's pretty like basic like clothes or. But if I don't like it, I, I can't. I just can't do it. Like, like if you if you just don't like the yeah. If, it's, yeah, if, if I just clothes, don't like it's like it, I'm not going to just yeah no rock it just because you're paying me. No. No, that's that's good. That makes sense. Perfect yeah. sense. High level integrity. Um, what about your YouTube show? Dinner with the Dawn. Dinner with the Dawn. You know what's dawn. so crazy about this? So, <laughs> you know, I didn't realize how big cooking shows were on YouTube until I have a son. So, um, you know, we put out all, we've interviewed a lot of people from like Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, Ross, and he's not really, never really interested in any, any of these conversations that we have. What he was interested in one time was, I, we did a show we was actually cooking, and I was showing him the show, and he was like, you did a cooking show? And he's interested in it. He's like, you should do more content like this. He's, he's like 11. I'm like, wow. He's like, this is what people on YouTube want to mm -hmm. see. I started doing research, and I realized how big cooking shows was. So 
what made you want to do a cooking show and um, what's, your, what's your plan for that? So I really like to cook. It's very therapeutic to me. And I know how to cook, <laughs> just not macaroni and cheese. <laughs> that we gonna, that's going to be solved today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really know how to cook. I love to cook. And my baby, he loves home cook home cooked food. So with um, YouTube, it was just something fun that I wanted to do. I wasn't even really looking like to like have anything come from it for real. But then when I started doing it, people loved it and they like, oh, cook this or cook this or do this on the show. And I'm like, oh, okay. It was one of them exciting moments again that I had, you know, <laughs> from like took to the thirty five hundred dollars at the club. <laughs> it took me back like that, and I'm like. Damn, people really like it, and I really like to genuinely just cook. So, um, I got my dinner with the Don. Yeah, I gotta watch all the episodes, and they super funny too, cause I'm on there with my personality. I got my friend on there with me, so it's dope. Um, I did an episode with my son too. But so now, I'm doing seasonings, mm. cause I'm a, I'm real big on seasoning. I used to be a, make a little too much salt. What, what, what kind of seasonings do you use? Right, right now, I like slap your mama. Slap your mama? Mm -hmm. what, what is that consist of? See, everything that I didn't see since I've been <laughs> no, here. No, that's good. It's so good. Fun. I just got a thumbs yeah, up. My I, wife I, said it's good. So good. It's good. <laughs> well, you got to understand, I haven't cooked in, in years. You need to listen to your son and cook that food. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you need to listen. Important. You see what I'm saying? Very but important. You said you have your own seasoning coming? I do. Which is so, perfect. Uh -huh. I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that's perfect because obviously you're using it. You turned it. This is like another asset. This is like obviously the, the, the theme of the show, Assets and Liabilities. You got the YouTube show. You just wanted to do something that was, right. that was cool. And now you've found another business inside of it. So you got yeah. the seasoning. What's the stop? Is there, is there a cookbook coming? No, I actually got a ghost kitchen coming. Ghost oh, kitchen. Ghost kitchen. Yeah. Okay. In Atlanta? Yep. What kind of food? I'm still creating my menu. So the ghost kitchens is interesting. All right, let's have this. This, this is an interesting conversation because. Yeah. A lot of people don't know about it. Of what a ghost kitchen is, so That's we got to get into that. That's a fact. We're definitely going to get into that. We got some knowledge in that. <laughs> Before we get into that, though, I want to talk about, like, you know, they always say, like, the average millionaire has seven streams of income. Mm -hmm. But that's discouraging to a lot of people because they think, like, you got to have seven different businesses or seven different jobs. But the thing about it is that what we learned is that you don't necessarily need seven different businesses. You just need one business that you can actually diversify. So, like, the YouTube situation. You can get paid from YouTube by AdSense, like Google AdSense, like the people, they, they actually pay you. You can actually probably even, the visual might be hard, but you might be able to turn that into an audio podcast where you can actually get paid from that too. But the good thing with the cooking shows is like, yeah, you can get paid for product placement. Mm -hmm. You can get paid for cookbooks. Mm -hmm. You can get paid even clothes, like aprons, stuff like that. Like people. I mean, the first episode you had a custom outfit on. Yeah, all my episodes. Yeah. yeah, yeah see? Yeah. And now yeah. people are going to want those outfits. Then, they show me asking. <laughs> yeah, even like food tasting, because like different restaurants and stuff like that, they'll come on. There's a lot of different ways how you can monetize that. But the ghost kitchens is crazy, because shout out to my boy Nacho Banger. He's an entrepreneur out of Baltimore. He's the first one that kind of talked to us about ghost kitchens. And they're like real popular in cities like Atlanta, D.C., or Chicago, New York, New York yep. where the rent is really high for a restaurant, a Brooklyn, yep. a Brooklyn Mortar restaurant. But the thing about it is like when you order Uber Eats, you don't really know where you're ordering from. Like yep. it's like you know, Mr. Chow's like restaurant, whatever. <laughs> Mr. Chow's a bad thing because that's actually a restaurant. <laughs> but let's say like like fish and chips extraordinaire, something like that, right? Let's, let's go with that. So what I realized is that you take a picture, you have a menu, and that's a that's a restaurant. But the restaurant can actually be an industrial kitchen. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, a storefront. Mm -hmm. So the ghost kitchens is cool because you don't have to pay the rent. And you don't have to actually run a brick and mortar restaurant. You can have a, a kitchen. And the thing about Ghost Kitchen is that you can have multiple restaurants from one kitchen. Yep. Yep. So you can have Chinese, you can have Jamaican, you can have Thai food all coming out of one kitchen. Nobody really knows where it's coming from. Yeah. So what, who put you on the Ghost Kitchens and, and what was the, what's the inspiration for, for that? Um, so he actually owns, y'all have heard of um, Toast on Linux. Yes. Host on Chef Harper. Yeah. We just heard about it. it would, we, we were in Atlanta and somebody was like, y'all haven't been there yet? Y'all have to be there. He was a, a guest on your show. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I yep. saw the episode. Chef Harper, he is amazing. I love him. He know how to cook so good. Um, he, when we did the episode, 
And like we we just we talk, you know, we catch up. He own the restaurant, show man love all the time, love him to death. And he called me one day and he was like, you need to. I was already telling him like I want I want to do some seasonings, and he's doing like his his whole um, like another restaurant. He doing some seasonings on his own, and he was like, you know, like I'm doing that. I got to connect on that, and so he was like. Um, he gonna set me up a meeting with the lady. So I'm like, okay, cool, let's do it. You know, I'm excited. So now we get there, we're talking about the seasons. She's showing me everything that she do, like the kitchen, we in this big ass place. It's, the ghost kitchens are really inside of where like the trucks go to like reload up, like the food trucks. Mm -hmm. So it's inside, it's inside of a place like that. And she just brought up the idea like, you know, I know you got a cooking show, you know, people like all of this stuff, like these recipes that you're doing, like, you open to it? I said, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we got to the West of Ghost Kitchen. She just like came up with the idea, like, you know, are you, is this something that you're interested in? Cause she does, she like franchises, um, um, Mr. Beast Burger. Y'all heard of Mr. Beast Burger? I have not. No. It's good. It's like a few, it's so good. Y'all gotta try it. It's so many like, um, like ghost kitchens and she do all the packaging, everything. Yeah, she brought the idea up like we could do we could do the seasonings and we could also, you know, do you a ghost kitchen. And she was just like, Are you interested? And I was like, Absolutely. So we got the ghost kitchens, we got the spices. There's a lot going on. Yes. There's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. We ain't done yet. We we got remedy happening. But first and foremost, you're a mom. And so what's it like to be a mogul mom with all that going on? I love my baby so much. It's hard though, like traveling, you know, being away from him. Mm -hmm. But he understand, he be like, oh, you about to go to work? Mm -hmm. Okay, now he cool. You know, at first it was like crying, mad. It used to make me so sad, I used to be crying. But it's hard, but I'm very, very happy and thankful that I get to provide, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's a sacrifice, but you know, it's for the greater good. He know, he know, I'm, he know mommy coming home and whatever he need, whatever he dreaming about and desiring, he gonna have it. How is that for him growing up, seeing you know his mom as an entrepreneur? Is that starting to rub off? Like, do you see that rubbing off on him as far as like, is he interested in business? Is he interested in kind of being his own boss? My baby want to be a superhero, <laughs> and he want to be a rapper. He's stuck in between the two, so both. You could do both. He could do both. <laughs> yeah. He could do both. Just like Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Hope. <laughs> I put him in so many costumes today. He want to be the Grinch and he want to be Spider Man. He want to be Batman. He want to be a vampire. I'm about to stop ordering him all these damn costumes off Amazon. <laughs> like, can you go on Amazon and order me a um? But yeah, no, being a mom is amazing. It's the best thing, the best decision I've ever decided to do in my whole entire life. I don't. I think if I didn't have a baby, I wouldn't even be sitting right here with y'all right now. Wow. Why is that? To be completely honest, because I wouldn't. I didn't. I couldn't see this far. Mm. Like I just didn't like. I would have still been in Chicago. I needed like a change. I needed something fresh. I was like, I need to do something. I got this baby. Like I have to make sure that he is okay. That was like my thing. So it was like, move, go away, go to Atlanta, get 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 out of Chicago, take your baby, and go and figure something out for you to do. And that's what I did. And if I didn't have that baby, I could see me not at the club. I love the club, y'all. Ain't nothing wrong with being in the club. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I wouldn't be sitting right here. That's all I'm saying. That's it. That's all she's saying. Period, Pooh. Um, okay. So <laughs> let's talk about something that, that was trending. Um, it was a very unique gift that you gave 28 acres. 28.8. We can't cheat that. 28.8. <laughs> Acres of land. Okay, so yeah, what made you want it? What, what was that gift about? Like, what what made you think outside the box? Like, cause like I said, that's something that I've never really seen somebody like do that before, at least on social media. Like, make it like you know, something like that. Um, he wanted originally. He wanted like a, um, I forget what it's called. Basically, like a a big old the building that we in, like to use it for different things. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then he also he like is super into like his community and like how he came up. So he wanted like to have these like townhomes and apartments for people who couldn't get jobs or you know like. So I was like, maybe I should just buy him land. And he could just build all of that shit on the land. Like he could have, it was a compound. That's what he wanted a compound. So maybe he could just put the compound on the land. He could build some apartments, you know. He create him a gener generational wealth. Yeah. And I was like, let me. Cause I just feel like we spend so much money 
on shit that don't really matter. Like, okay. it matter a little bit, because I want it. But, you know, it's just <laughs> like, it's not, you know, like a necessity. It's not nothing that I really need. And it's not nothing that, like, how was just outside. Like, oh, like, this this car is nice. I'm, I don't want my, my lamp truck no more. You know, it's yeah. like stuff you could just get rid of. Like, you can't get rid of This is on the earth, and this is yours forever. Like, It's super important. You could give this to all your kids. Your family, your mama, this can keep going and going and going and growing. Yeah, I think it's super important. When I when you put that post up, I, I might have memorized it. It was like, what do you buy the person that has everything? Yeah. You give them land, and they can build and have generational wealth. Yeah. And so when I saw you put that, I'm like, wow, super impressed. But I also know that the people are following you. A lot of young ladies, young young men are following you. The impact that that can have, right? Because yeah. they're seeing that in real time, like they've seen you do all these other things. I'm like, wait, here's a transition here. There's yeah. something happening here in her life. And so then I read up even more so on you and I'm like, wait, you want, there's an image shift that's about to happen. You, you want to be known as the businesswoman. So yeah. talk about that transition. Cause I think that's so important, important that young people see you doing these things. Because again, you have the influence, but bigger than that, you have impact. So can you talk about that? Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, I think that right now I'm in like this era of like just I'm on my grown woman shit. Like I'm I used to be a little reckless, loud talking. That just I don't wanna be the Instagram girl, you know, like that's not who I wanna be. Like I'm a real businesswoman. Like I got I got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff that I'm doing. And I need people to take me seriously. Like this is not no little Instagram to death. But it's like, I need something bigger than that. Cause I lost my Instagram page at one point. Mm. And when I lost my page, it was like, now look at you. Mm. What, you, what you about to do? You know, it's like, you gotta look for, I needed to lose it. Like I needed that because it's like, you gotta do something that's bigger than Instagram. You know, that's what also too with this cosmetic line that I'm doing, it's like, it's just so much bigger than, you can't, it ain't about just logging in and looking, okay, she cute, double tap. like. I want you to go in the store. I want you to go online, like besides Instagram, and be able to purchase something. And you know, I need something continuous. Mm -hmm. And I think that before it was just about like, okay, I'm getting booked here. I'm going here. I'm doing this. Um, I'm gonna post this picture and get this money. And then on top of, you know, I got some old old drama. You know, so you know, people like to to look at the negative things about people. And I think that it's easy to do that, especially with somebody who you got 5.5 million followers. So people like to highlight the negative things. But I've done so many other great things, but you're not gonna, you, you not, they ain't gonna like make that a big bright light. Cause they like to tell people down, especially a black woman, that y'all better stop that shit too. I don't like that. But now I'm just like, I'm trying to transition. I just, Ariana Fletcher here. Ariana Fletcher. Do you, do, Ariana Fletcher. Do you ever feel um, like pressure? Because like you say, you have so many followers on Instagram. A lot of young women look mm -hmm. up to you. Like it's not like you necessarily signed up to be a role model, but a lot of a lot of people look at you. Like mm -hmm. when you when you're moving around, when you post, when you do, is that subconsciously in the back of your mind, or you just don't you like just you know just live? I used to always say, um, like, you can't make me try to change because somebody watching me, like this is who I am, this is who brought me here, this is, you know what I'm saying, like you, you here because you like me, I ain't, I ain't coming following you, like you, but it's like I change, my mind is like it's different because it's like if you, you gotta, I'm, I'm a leader, so you know, you know people, you got to lead in the right direction, and even though like I didn't ask for these people to come and follow me, you know, but it happened because it's something that they like, so Make a change and be something better, you know? Like, you can't be sitting on Instagram cursing and acting crazy all day. Like, you know what I'm saying? If people like you and they love you and, and you a leader, then show them the way. Show them the right way. So I think that, you know, I looked at it, like, in a bigger perspective. Hmm. And I, like, changed my ways. So I don't want nobody doing no reckless, no, nothing dumb, nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah, when I, when I hear you speak, I, hear, I think of two words. I think growth and I think legacy. I feel like those. <laughs> I feel like those are the two things that like are at the forefront of, of what you're, you're you're encompassing right now. The YouTube show, 
right? Reality TV. Um, I'm wondering now, is there more ventures down the road? Is reality TV or, or TV something that's on, on the, the vision board or yeah. an aspiration of yours? Yeah, I'm actually filming right now for a reality show with BET. It's called The Impact ATL. Okay. And it's, um, it's coming out soon. I think we might know some of the cast members. Who's on it? Yeah, tell us the something. cast. Yeah. So the cast is me, Tay, uh, Jada, Des, and Lakia. Okay, Jada, that's our people. Yeah. That's dope because I I, I like to see you and Jada, y'all y'all friends. You, you yeah, know? we cool, we cool. Yeah, cause um you know we had her on the show last season, and um you know another really dope businesswoman, but I don't think people really fully appreciated it. And I feel like after the show came out, a lot of attention came and she really started to get more and more, you know, business opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I love to see stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm glad to hear that y'all on the same show. I'm gonna check it out. When does it come out? Soon. <laughs> to be determined. To be determined. TBD. TBD. I'll tell you, tell you when the cameras go off. <laughs> it's real soon, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be super good. I get real personal on the show. Yeah. Yeah, I'm scared to watch. <laughs> I get real personal. I let people see a different side of me. So when you, you know we we see um, Instagram is is an interesting place, right? Because it's like so much stuff happens and so many personalities are born and different trends. So we're in a trend now where you familiar with the soft life? No. You ever heard of it? Mm -mm. Soft life is a is a whole movement that you know a lot of women are champion. Where you know a lot of times, especially black women, it's like you had to be hard. Like you know what I mean, like oh, a yeah. strong black woman yeah. and super aggressive and different things of that nature. So a soft life is saying like women are comfortable in their femininity, and um, they're not necessarily trying to you know be as hard and different things of that nature. And some people you know are champion it. Some people are not really champion it. How do you feel about that? As far as like a woman just being comfortable being a woman and not necessarily being like overly um, assertive or aggressive or you know things of that nature. I think that we feel like we gotta be that way because when a woman is being soft and being submissive and being you know real lax it's just it, I think it, it, it even makes me feel like I'm not doing something right like I feel like I'm I'm scared a little bit. Like, I, don't, I always feel like I gotta be like, you know? And that's not cool. No. And I think that is, not y'all, but like <laughs> men, a lot of men put that that on women and make women be like, you know, like always wanna be on a tough, you know, hard body. Cause <laughs> I, I felt that a lot. Yeah. So I think that, um, this soft life, I'm ready to join that. <laughs> <laughs> soft life. Well, you know, I, I think it's when, when women don't feel safe, then they have yeah. to, you know, but I think that that's the role of a man to actually make a woman feel safe and, and it's, you know, a yin and yang. So it's an interesting conversation that's been happening online because now it's like, you know, kind of getting back into that soft life. It doesn't necessarily take away from a woman, but it just puts a woman at ease and, and like you said, more, more comfortable. But like yeah. you said, just, you kind of feel at edge because you think you have to be on guard, yep. but that's not necessarily how it should be, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Are there investment opportunities that you do outside of what we've heard already? Or is there like, real, uh, you have a real estate portfolio? Or are you investing in stocks? Or are these things unfamiliar to you right now? I'm investing in stocks. Yeah, let's talk about who got it. You, who got you? Who got you invested? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna give you a Zoom. That's easy. Give you that's a Zoom easy. Call but that's that's the power of this the conversation, right? Like, yeah, we're getting familiar with the things that you know you're highlighting, and there's some things that we're great at. But that's yeah. collaboration. That's partnership in itself, right? Yeah, like, investing in some stocks. Yeah, yeah, we have, Little we bit. have, and we teach people how. Oh, y'all being humble. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, yeah, you know. You know, <laughs> I can't wait to hear about this. Uh, well, why? So, let's have this conversation. You're not investing in stocks. Is it because you just wasn't ever educated on it, or you kind of are a little nervous about it? No, I'm just not educated on it. And I think that I've always be like, when I don't know too much about something, I'd be like, mm-mm, because I'd be scared of thinking somebody's trying to take my money. Yeah. It's human nature not to feel comfortable with something that you're not educated on, especially when it comes to money. 
right? Yeah. We usually just stay away. But that's the problem, especially in our community. We haven't really been educated mm -hmm. on a lot of these topics for so long, and we kind of just shot away from it. Um, but that's not necessarily, you know, something that is beneficial long term. So that's why, like, we try to, like, you know, just educate on real estate, stocks, crypto, because a lot of times people have a false conception that it's really, really complicated or it's over their head when it's like, it's really not. It's not hard at all. Like, I feel like if you could remember a rap song, that's way more complicated <laughs> yeah. than actually and the number of rap songs stocks. we remember, right? You got to have 16 bars. You got to do the hook. Like, it's a whole... <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's a process. It's definitely In a process. In crypto, I heard some little tweaks about crypto, like some bad stuff. I'm yeah. scared. Yeah. Well, I feel like all investments, you got to just be educated, but it's ups and downs, right? Yeah. So it's like, even like with business, business is not always going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be bad. But that's how investments are. Crypto is the same way. But I feel like people kind of look at investing a lot of times as gambling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, that's, that's the wrong way to go about it. Okay. Teach me, please. <laughs> that's going to be a whole Because it's like, if, you go, if, you, okay. go to, if yeah. you go to Vegas, right, and you gamble now, Gambling is a game of chance, but investing is a game of knowledge. But investing can be synonymous with gambling when you treat investing like gambling. So, like, if you just hear about Bitcoin and you don't know anything about it, and it's like, I want to double my money next week. Let me just put 100000 into it. That's like gambling, right? right? And that's when you get hurt because then it's like, damn, it went down to fifty. I lost $50,000. Give me all my money back. But when you study, when you research, you know when the good time to buy you're not emotional about it, like hold it for a long period of time. That is knowledge. So like when you brought that land, like that's knowledge. So mm -hmm. you know it's gonna go up over the time, like they're not making any more land, da 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 da. Like these right. are all rational decisions that you made in your brain before you actually bought it. But it's like a lot of times people don't think like that. They just think like, I'm gonna put this money in and I'm a quick flip. That's our problem a lot of times. Like we, yeah. we always look at the quick flip instead of the long yeah, haul. When, when we don't know what to do with money, we do what we know. And that's yeah. spend it. And so like our thing is like, let's figure out how to accumulate more assets that can generate revenue. So that's why I said when we saw that 28.8, it was like, oh, yeah, she gets it. She yeah. totally gets it. There's a lot of young women watching you. So I just, I, I, and it hit me. I'm like, look, what's the, the toughest lesson you learned in business that you wish you could have passed on, or had known, and now you can pass on to somebody who's actually coming up in business, like a young entrepreneur? What's the toughest lesson you've learned? That you can't trust nobody. That's what T.I. told us. That's a fact. He said it a little, <laughs> a little differently, but. That's interesting. Yeah. People go crazy about that dollar. So what's what's next for you? What's on your, your vision board for the for the next five ten years? So we got Remedy. We got Remedy Swim. Swim, swim line. Swim line. Yeah, I'm doing a swim line too. We're gonna drop that in October. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we get into some things. <laughs> um, I also want to do a skincare line because, you know, with all the makeup, I still want people to be like, I don't take that off. Wash your face before you go to sleep now, you know, because I got a very, very, very long skincare routine. That's what keeps the makeup on flawless. <laughs> got to let them know that too. Um, and then we got the Ghost Kitchen and the Seasonings and YouTube. Building me a big, beautiful house. Congratulations. Congrats. No more babies right now. So I'm just excited about all this. Very important. Very important. What's your, what's, what's, out of all of those, what's the one that you're most excited about? Remedy. Remedy. Yeah. yeah. I, got good, I got a good feeling about it. Remedy, how many, what, what exactly is it? So it's the, it's the lip gloss, it's the makeup. <laughs> the lip gloss, the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. lip gloss. So I'm starting on what I'm. My first launch is gonna be ten lip glosses, eight lip liners, and like a new eyeshadow palette. But we're gonna go on, and we're gonna do like concealer, makeup brushes, powder. You probably like, okay, what is that? But we doing <laughs> everything. Like every, I want my whole makeup kit to be remedy. Every single thing that you need, eyeliners, every shade of lip gloss, lipstick. I'm super excited about this. You, you're very intentional about your names, right? Even like your hashtag, your, your tag on Instagram is for your late brother. You have dinner with the Don, mm -hmm. right? Because you're a boss. Where'd the name Remedy come from? It's like, it's like my fix. It's like my perfect 
remedy, like what I put together and what is gonna be the absolute perfect thing that I need. So it's like my my little beauty secret. Mm. And I wanna share that with the world. You know, you look good, you feel good. That's a fact. That's a fact. You look good, you smell good, you play good, you do good. Okay, I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Daily affirmations. <laughs> Nah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, y'all. I have fun with y'all. I fuck with y'all. <laughs> I appreciate it. I and appreciate I'm ready it. to learn, so I'm serious. I want y'all to teach me about... Nah, for sure. That's going to happen. We set up a Zoom call whenever okay. you get a chance. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we teach you for sure. Because it's, right. it's really not that complicated, for sure. Like, once you learn, I feel like you're you the type of person, like, you're really going to be into it. Especially once you start to make money. Oh, for sure. I'm yeah. locked Who in. Who doesn't like, like that? Like, when you said you made that 3500 and you was like... When you start making like ten thousand dollars, like you made ten thousand dollars for the first time and stop, you're like, I ain't have to do nothing, nothing, not one thing. Right. That's when it's coming. Like, oh, it's lit. It's lit. <laughs> Let me locked in. I'm ready. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause, please. Ariana Fletcher, the Don herself. <laughs>